Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Tyler, and this is Lenny. We're here to punk Lenny's <laughs> And uh, we're go he's going to teach me a little bit about coffee today, and then I'm going to teach him a little bit about painting. Ready? Sounds great. Let's go. Do you want to learn espresso or learn pour Ta over? Oh, um. Do basic. Teach. Americana let's. Yeah, let's. Let's start with a with a basic Americano. Okay. Like I, I could really use an iced Americano. Okay. So we got our coffee grinder, uh -huh. our weights and measures and tools, and then this is the espresso machine. It's basically just a pump and a boiler when you really break it down. So the pump is gonna push boiling 200 degree water up through our espresso puck and then out into the cup. And then we're gonna weigh everything and check, take all our measurements so that if we wanna repeat it or make tweaks to it, it's really easy to have a baseline numbers and then we'll modify it from there. Okay, so what, is it, what are these so mean this here? This grams in. Grams of what? Yeah. Coffee in, milliliters. Like ground coffee. Yep, okay. yep. Uh, milliliters of end beverage and the time that it takes that to get pushed through the espresso machine. Okay, and we've got a Brazil <coughs> Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. From Noble Coffee Roasters in Ashland, Oregon. What can we expect from the it's Brazil? It's super peanut-y. Lots and lots of peanut flavor, lots of heavy body. Um, there's a little bit of, a little bit of citrus acidity okay. in there, but the, the, definitely the main flavor is peanut, peanut butter. Okay, tone. nice. So, this is the porta filter. Mm -hmm. Knock it out. <laughs> Knockbox compliments of Tyler Murphy's Red Lodge Gallery. Red Lodge mistake. Red Lodge. <laughs> so, this so. machine that we're working on, I have worked on this a little bit. I had it in that old gallery in Red Lodge, and that was a big mistake <laughs> and a financial burden. And the, then Lenny was kind enough. It's all perfect. It all worked out just great. <laughs> and he took over the lease on it, and that's how I found out about the space that I'm in right now. Oh, that's a good transition. <laughs> Throw it on our scale. Zero it up. Our number, our baseline number is 18 grams. So okay. we're gonna take this last little bit out. Boop. Give it a little. Palm tapping distribution, bless it. Knock down any of those air pockets over here. Okay. Nice clean tamper. And then elbow up, and we're just gonna just piston just straight down. Okay. Just like that. Why, why like that? Just, to, it really forces you to not bend left or right or up or down, like crank your wrist around. If you just try, try to line up the whole system and then just push, 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 okay. consistently go straight up and down, <clears throat> which is going to be better for your wrist. And you also want this to be a super flat, smooth bed all the way around. So, okay. purge. Purge. If you, want to, if you want to double, double check, you can wipe this screen off. A lot of places <laughs> don't worry about their screens often enough. You get really channely, really channely shots from not having clean screens or clean baskets. So just another little smaller scale that we're gonna use for espresso. It's just flashing all over the place. Oh, it just like looks like. I try to get like the under underneath shot too. It's always pretty. So we're gonna watch for pretty even. Uh, water flow through there, and then close to the end of the shot, it's going to collect towards the middle. Because it kind of all gets wet around like the outside. Yeah, and then it starts to like push towards the path of least resistance, and so yeah. um, the signs the signs of it being bad is if it's all pulling from like one spot, or if it's all like all your water's coming from one side or the other, or it's never touching the middle, and the middle's getting neglected. Basically, yeah. it's just a sign of 
um, the coffee's not equally dense all the way through. Yeah. And the water will always take the path of least resistance on its way out. Yeah. And okay. that's, that's cool. Over extract the part that the water is and under extract everything the water's not touching. So you're going to get bad flavors from both over and under. And that, my friends, is how you get a free iced Americano from Lenny. <laughs> Promise that you're making a film. <laughs> It is peanutty. Very earthy. It's good. Thanks, Lenny. My pleasure. So you gonna try it out now? Tyler the barista. Tyler the barista. <laughs> All these skills coming back to you. Okay. Uh, what do you use to? This? Uh, the no. black one on top of the grinder there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Clean it out. See, that? that's cool. I didn't realize, like the old porta filters that you had, oh, you couldn't tell if it was. Yeah, yeah. If it was. One, uh, that's one benefit. It's, it's a lot cleaner, it would, and you can watch it closer with bottomless ones. So, in the old ones that I remember working with, it was just one hole that came out, so you'd never know. Yeah. So, I, so you'd never know if it was. Like you were saying, extracting right, poorly yeah, in one spot yeah. or not getting to a per certain part of the puck. Man, I know so much about coffee so now. Much. Do this first. We're going to tear it. Got it? Okay. Dude, this thing is tripping out, though. This looks like a lot. 21.8. Twenty-one point eight. So that means I need to, I need to take out thirteen point eight. Uh, how about three point eight? Three point eight. This is kind of hot, man. Smack it around a little bit, make a nice level. There you go. Okay. Shit, that's really hot. Kind of fast. <laughs> okay. Smack, smack. And then piston. Tap, tap on this little man. Yeah. Just to kind of get it all level. Yeah, just kind of get nice and level. As level as we can before we even tamp it. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Just tamp to finish it off. Yeah. How, many, how hard down do I press? Kind of just till it stops. The colloquialism is 30 pounds of pressure, but that's. Who knows? Cable. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Well, who knows when they're pushing down at 30 pounds of pressure? <laughs> Set it on. Don't yell at me, Lenny. Deep like your back. This one? Yep. Hey, look at that. Looks like we're getting some pretty good flow action there. What do you think? It's pretty. Okay, and then when do I stop it? We're gonna stop it. We should hit about 30 milliliters for right about 30 seconds. Wow, you're good. Yep. That pretty much happened. Yeah. And that means that you've dialed in this machine pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the that's the goal is to be able to be as consistent as possible with each set of shots. Um, and when you track your numbers, it's really easy to keep making good shots every time. All right. You want a nice americano? That'd be wonderful. That's it. I remember I broke this like in the middle of a festival one time. It like came unscrewed and it's just, so spray it's just spraying <laughs> water everywhere. <laughs> From our uh, Hello Waterfall filtration system. Somebody was telling somebody was telling me that you are like the the uh, expert on water. I'm not an expert, but I probably know more than most. People. Yeah. <laughs> Most people that know nothing about water, I know more than them. <laughs> and yeah, because a, a huge factor of good coffee is good water. 
And so, that's, if you can get your water nailed down, that's like half the battle of having excellent coffee. Because you can have the best coffee in the world, and if you have terrible water, it's gonna be really hard to like keep that quality at the level it should be, if not impossible, because your water's just flattening it out or tanking it off, or just tastes super stabby and aesthetic every time, or, but. Let's see, let's see, what, see what you think. I think that is delightful. I happily pay for this Americano from your time. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Should we go paint? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's go paint. Okay, how are we going to do this? I kind of need, I might get my office is kind of a mess. A lot of stuff got put up here. Um, for, we had an event in the gallery the other day, and so a lot of stuff just got pushed up here. Um, I think we will, I'm gonna do a quick, like a really quick painting and uh, from, a, from a photo on my laptop, and then I'll have you uh, maybe do the same thing. Yeah, kind of yeah. the same painting. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do that. I'm gonna look at you. I don't oh, like. Yeah, I don't sorry. like looking at the yeah, camera. Yeah, that's weird. Um, so I think what we're gonna paint is. Uh, I was up listening to our friend Parker Brown play jazz the other night, and just the way the lighting was coming through was really cool. So I was taking a ton of pictures of him, and. Uh, so, I was kind of inspired by something like this. It'll be just a good, a good uh, thing to paint to kind of be able to talk about a few different ideas that I have about painting. So, okay, we'll try. We'll start her off there. Uh, okay, so we'll just paint on this. We'll clean off this palette <laughs> as best we can. <laughs> I'm like the worst at. Uh, cleaning af up after myself. Like I just ruin brushes all the time and I forget to uh, forget to clean off my palette. Okay, so I'm actually gonna sketch this in with a pencil first. Um, so, let's do that really fast. All right, I see that thing is up here-ish. And then I'm just going to kind of make some general observations about where some of this other stuff is. And then everything has to connect. So here's like the top of his base. Here's sort of where his head is. Now where's his shoulder in relation to those. Now I know that these, these parts all kind of have to connect. And then I can just keep on doing triangles around. Where's the other shoulder at? Okay, it's over here. It's lower, slightly to the left of his head, of the outside edge of his head. And then where's his hand at in relation to his shoulder? It's even further left. It's maybe like here. And then I might pick out like one angle at a time and just start connecting things around. His whole shoulder line is kind of like this, and then it cuts it over like this. I, I'm always switching between different ways of drawing. So right now I'm just trying to pick out one angle at a time. And be really intentional with, with angles and direction. So we okay. So we got our camera back, and we're gonna we're gonna cut. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm so bad at this, Lenny. <clears throat> our camera right. died, and we did our sketches. Yeah, and Lenny's and Lenny's got his sketch. Now we're gonna move on to the next step. Did anything that I was kind of pointing out help you at all? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think like finding some of the basic shapes or basic. 
focal points and then triangulating them to each other. <clears throat> I feel like my head is still misproportioned to it. Yeah. This is sort of the method that I'm, the, the uh, workflow that I'm using these days for painting. It, it's, it's an older um, sort of workflow that I, that I did at the beginning uh, when I first started in oil painting and I've kind of come back to it. Um, basically it's just like draw everything out uh, with a pencil or graphite or something or <laughs> pencil and graphite are the same thing uh, graphite or charcoal and then um, and then seal that drawing get that drawing as, as accurate as you can and then seal it um, so that you can put a wash of paint of thin oil paint over everything and that just kind of kills the uh, white of the canvas. I'm going to mix up just just the basic color uh, that I see Parker as to start with. I'm, I'll mix up a puddle and then I'll just start mo pushing that puddle in different color directions. So basically I'm just going to try to get the value of He's kind of all one color and value, or he's one value. The color shifts throughout. And within any given shape, I think like you can kind of be, you can experiment and have fun shifting around color-wise. You can, it can be more blue at one end of the shape and more warm on the other end. So basically I'm just finding the correct value and then I'll and then I'm gonna push things around from there. Since he's a silhouette, he is mostly pretty blue. And then, so I'm noticing that he's more blue at the top and then shifts into warm, warmer colors down at the bottom. And if I squint at the image, that kind of helps too. How do you not get stuck in the fine detail? Uh, squinting at it, yeah, and using a, a pretty big brush for as long as you possibly can. Sure. Painting at arm's length. And I just kind of keep, whatever I'm painting, I usually at the beginning keep at a distance from me, and I don't start looking at all the small detail, so I'm, I just try to work on the big shapes for as long as possible. Um, if you get the silhouette shapes right, we can tell obviously that that's Parker. So if we get the silhouette shapes right, then in theory, everybody else should be able to tell too that it's Parker. Just taking liberties with the colors and shifting around all over the place. Just as long as the value stays right, you can, as long as the values, uh, correct. You can kind of shift around with color, and get creative with color. We're just basically kind of making like pop art here today because we're painting a popular guy. It's popular, yeah. Um, so it's basically just like a silhouette design and it's kind of like a Warhol thing. So I'm just going to put yellow around it. Quick little pop art painting. Lenny, you ready to... I'm ready. You ready to push some paint around? I'm ready to push the paint around. All right, cool. I've never done oils before. I've painted with acrylic before, but it's my first time using oil, so I'm kind of excited and scared. Dip into a little bit of paint thinner, and then you're gonna mix up, mix up just this blue and that and that brown color okay. over there. Those are like opposites on the color wheel. It turns out a little, so it cancels out. Kind of cancels out, makes a nice neutral. You can kind of shift between warm and cool. Yeah, big broad. Too dark? Well, so you can wipe, wipe it back. back. Yeah, show uh, the paper towel. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, or more thinner. Yeah. yeah. No white. No white? No? Just don't do it? Yeah. Okay. Because this is, so this is just transparent stuff that we're doing here. If you were to add white right now, at this stage, then it would influence everything that you try to put on top of that. Because white, like this stuff can dry pretty fast. Gotcha. This part of it can. Uh, but as soon as you put white into a mixture, um, it becomes opaque, and then uh, and then it doesn't dry very fast. Um, so white's just a very different, or just a different product, kind of, almost. 
It's just that that white is going to influence. It's going. It's going to make everything kind of milky. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stab there. I like it. So just nice. kind of mixing back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice intentional brush strokes. <laughs> One way that that I kind of like to work is to just go like, I'm gonna do one stroke and leave it, and, and, then, and then go back and do a different stroke. Yeah, rather than I kind of like, kinda, kinda yeah, noodling. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing great. What do you think? What do you think of that? Like painting at arm's length. Yeah, it's hard to practice. Like I'm used to like trying to like nitpick all the details, but yeah. trying to like actually just be broader about it is challenging. But again. Yeah, you're making some, putting down some really confident strokes, and they look good. Killing it. Dude, your painting is really nice. Oh, thanks. Oh, I was just like, trying to like detail this too much, so I just purposely ruined it to stop. Because <laughs> I know I would just like pick at it forever, and that's like what I do with a lot of art stuff, is just like to pick out the little details like over and over and over again. So, for the sake of trying to be true to this, I would just like <laughs> grab some paint and just like, smudged up the top of the base because I was yeah. like I just gotta start over and just like stand at arm's length again and like just big strokes and oh that's great. It looks it looks really good Len. Thanks. Should I call it a call it a day right now or yeah let's call it a day on this video. You can paint as long as you want. Thanks for hanging out with us and learning painting and coffee with Montana Gallery and Eben Coffee Collective. I don't know if we'll see you soon, but we very well might. Oh, you're the best. My takeaway, what's my takeaway about coffee? Film. Just make a film if you want to get a free coffee from Lenny. <laughs> um, and, uh, well, I guess I learned why the new porta filters that you have mm. oh, yeah. are different from are, the old ones yeah. and like what the purpose of that is. Yeah. I think we articulated that earlier on, so. Definitely, well, that's good. And I learned, um, you take I learned to just to try to like believe in the system. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I trust that it's gonna work out and not try to nitpick every little art detail and try to just go more with the feeling of it. Yeah, which is the a big, big, the big challenge. Yeah, yeah, it's a good challenge. Just have fun. Uh, cheers, Lenny. Cheers.